Okay, yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously a very neglected uh, topic in Tezos is, you know, off-chain coordination. Um, you know, so, you know, obviously there's the, you know, we've talked quite a lot about the, the on-chain mechanism. We've, we're even in progress with it right now. Uh, but one of the things I want to talk about is, you know, so, so if you start with the Tezos cliche, uh, this is a tweet that I really enjoyed from, uh, you know, from uh, a few months ago, or maybe it's from the summer. You know, it's basically talking like, you know, the different uh, blockchains that are launching or already exist, you know, what's sort of the, the joke about them, right? It's like, so Cardano, it's like blockchains in LaTeX, LaTeX. Uh, Cosmos, uh, ETA, Q4, 2017, just, you know, you know, go down to Tezos, it's governance will be easier on chain, right? Uh, and so then, uh, you know, really like, what, what's, what are sort of some useful concepts for thinking about, uh, you know, off chain governance or just governance in general uh, in the blockchain space? Uh, and so the way you know typically start is you're thinking about a classic coordination game. So if it really only you know you really only want to use a block you know sort of the only way a blockchain is valuable is if you know all the other participants in the network are also using it. So uh, you know so you know you only want to coordinate you know if this is if you look at this uh, you know game theoretic uh, you know matrix you know sort of see that it's only valuable if you're both if you you know if, if you're a you know if you're player one you, you know and you pick a and when you're player two picks C uh, or if you you know if you if you pick B and they pick uh, C. Uh, you know, it does. You, you know, you end up both uh, in a in a bad uh, equilibrium. So, uh, the idea is with with blockchains is that you know at their most fundamental, at the most simplest base, you know, basic level, it's all about coordination all the way down. Uh, and, and and even you know at the distributed systems level, they are literally you know game theoretic mechanisms f to coordinate untrusting you know computers, right? Uh, and uh, you know the e proof of work, you know, the longest longest chain in, in Bitcoin, you know, sort of satisfies these conditions. Uh, and in Tezos, you know, proof of stake with with slashing, right? Uh, and so then, uh, you know, it, these are so, this this mechanism, this aspect of, of blockchains is so powerful that some of these systems uh, can somehow survive and function in even the most adversarial conditions, like dis uh, despite being almost never upgraded. You know, the, the coordination mechanisms, underlying coordination mechanisms, are so powerful and overpowering. Uh, that you know they don't really even have to be upgraded that much. Obviously, there's issues that Bitcoin will run into later in the future with the, you know the the inflation rate and whatnot. But this is a very you know incredible uh, aspect of it that you know it, you know and that Tezos you know hopefully um, you know sort of can do more uh, you know as a result of having a you know a formal coordination mechanism on chain. Uh, but the thing about Bitcoin that's that's you know sort of also still really interesting and that we have some data on so far is that it can survive with very little upgrade. Because of it has such a powerful underlying coordination mechanism. So, uh, and then even when you look at the blockchain use cases that really seem to matter, uh, smart contracts, trust minimized, trust minimized contracts, as Meltem said earlier, uh, you know, again, hard to change the contract, hard to change the rules that you know, not, and because it's so hard to change, this allows a lot, you know, a very very large number of people to sort of coordinate around, uh, you know, around uh, believing that these contracts will be, uh, you know, continue to execute uh, even again in, you know, situations where you don't trust the other parties. Uh, and so the hard, these hard rules, they create this like sort of certainty around a common knowledge, you know, what everybody else knows uh, is very accepted. So it's that this contract will run, no one will interfere with it uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, and so then, you know, it, it's sort of the way in the most simplest level, it's like this system uh, will, the, the rules that apply uh, in this place also apply in this place, uh, and yet, like like anywhere with internet, and and I mean that literally, like that guy is on his phone in the, in that picture, <laughs> um, and basically, uh, you know, coordination is uh, you know also you know needed for upgrading and governing blockchain networks, uh, and so you know as I said, so, you know sort of there's this wide-reaching coordination uh, that's inside the system because of the hard rules. Uh, you know, it, it's sort of like, again, you, you know, let's back up and think about like the common knowledge, you know, aspect of this. It's basically that, you know, how would you figure out, uh, you know, what, what everybody else knows or believes to be true? Uh, that's like how you figure out, you know, where basically where you want, what you want to coordinate around. Um, and it's sort of the way I, one of the, the anecdotes that I really love uh, in that context is how, if you're an authoritarian government, how do you manipulate, you know, a bread line, right, or something like that? And there's this really good book uh, by this guy, uh, Michael Chue. Uh, basically about uh, where he, he uses this as one of the examples uh, when it's very obvious to everyone. So if, if they start, if, if an authoritarian government starts handing out, you know, uh, less bread, everyone sort of can notice, they can coordinate around the common knowledge that, hey, we're all getting less bread, right? Uh, but if, uh, you know, basically the, the instead the authoritarian government slips something into the bread that allows them to get the same, you know, bread that's the same size, but it tastes a little different. Not everyone can, will coordinate around the common knowledge that you know they're they're getting something that they're being cheated or that they're being that they're basically that 
Um, you know that it, it, this is a very one of the most powerful mechanisms of, of social control, and it applies to every single. It's useful for thinking about every single kind of coordination mechanism under the sun. Uh, and so this is here's a great example. So the sock puppetry uh, in the in the um, you know sort of the social media space for manipulating elections. Uh, you know the, obviously the 2016 election is a common uh, example. Uh, basically, you know, so Jeff Goldberg on he's on Twitter. He 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 constantly uh, you know sort of uh, you know finds these different ways that major you know block, whether it's you know certain blockchain projects in this case it's Justin Sun. Uh, at Tron, uh, or also, you know, he looks at, you know, sort of all sorts of different nation state actors and whatnot. All the interesting things that they're doing on social media to basically create uh, common, no like create perceptions of common, no affect common knowledge uh, and cause people to coordinate differently than they would otherwise. Uh, and so this is very, very valuable for our context because in Tezos right now, uh, you know, all basically, and, and, and this is true of all blockchain communities, uh, it's hi things are hyper fragmented. The way knowledge is disseminated, the way it's, under, you know, sort of the way that people come to a common knowledge or coordinate is extremely, extremely fragmented, and it's very cheap to interfere with. Uh, and so, you know, obviously a lot, of, a lot comes on Twitter. You know, as, as you see here, there's nine different places in which uh, people can look for important, you know, information uh, about, the, about uh, you know, protocol upgrades or about baking or about, you know, community sentiment and that sort of thing. And almost all of them are, you know, somewhat manipulable. Uh, and so uh, what we, what, what's really important is, you know, well, actually, let me go to the, to the next thing, is that, you know, these, these platforms are not designed... Uh, to coordinate these hyper decentral, you know, global internet, totally internet native uh, blockchain communities, and so what we need to figure out is a way, are, are ways to basically build entirely new platforms on, you know, for for basically coordinating, you know, internet internet it, it, communities that exist entire almost entirely on the internet when they when they're coming together, uh, and so aside from times like this. Uh, so you have uh, Decred Politea is one early example, at the, uh, you know, effort at this. It's basically they're trying to, you know, basically solve the problem of, uh, you know, I guess, like, you know, sort of proposal spam or provenance for proposals uh, and then having them on, you know, basically being able to track them on chain, uh, you know, so secure them against uh, types of censorship resistance because they want to, you know, sort of govern all sorts of, uh, you know, all sorts of things using uh, Decred. Uh, and then another would be, you know, sort of there's the Aragon governance forums and other mechanisms that Aragon's created. There's also, you know, our example in, in the case of Athens, we, you know, a lot of us have used Kialo. Uh, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, it's showing, you know, if you look here, it was showing, uh, you know, it seemed from Kialo that there was a very big positive sentiment towards Amendment Proposal 1 uh, and, and, and much less uh, towards Amendment Proposal 2. Uh, and then there was, you know, so Stephen Andrews, he's created Tezvote. Uh, he has a signaling tool where basically, um, you know, basically you can see, uh, you know, basically, so, so basically, you know, how, how, basically how did people signal how they wanted to vote on those two proposals? Uh, basically, we had about 1.4% participation, very low because there's a lot of friction. Uh, but the results disagree entirely with Kialo that I just showed before. Uh, and so this is really interesting. So both of the, the two tools that people were using were saying entirely different things. And again, low, you, you, know, you could argue that Tezvo, oh, it only had 1.4% per participation. Probably in real reality, Kial, I think if you look, I, I looked, it was like, you know, maybe there were a couple dozen people who contributed. Same, really the same, uh, almost the same level of participation really at the end of the day, like the same order of magnitude. Uh, and so they're saying entirely different things, and that's a very you know surprise. That, that basically affects the common knowledge about what people think is going to happen, and therefore how they will coordinate when they participate in the on-chain mechanism. But thankfully, you know, I guess in the in the actual results, there was actually a relative, a somewhat more uh, you know greater coordination around it. You know, there was a you know both the number of bakers and the percentage of the rolls was greater for Athens A. There was a real uh, you know contingents you know uh, of like about I think it's 68 bakers who voted for Athens B. Uh, in the proposal period, uh, but at the end of the day, this is a really interesting result because uh, basically, you know, it, it, it wasn't predicted by uh, you know both of the, the the tools that we had beforehand to to see what was you know to, to get a sense of what was going to happen. And the question is, how can we address some of these challenges, which are basically like, how do we know uh, create better common knowledge around uh, you know the t around you know off chain uh, to you know for uh, governing the Tezos protocol on chain. Uh, and so we actually, we sort of, there's a new project that we're sort of creating, uh, really at the early stages still, but so, you know, some folks at TCF, uh, us at T, you know, some of us at TQ, and then uh, Stephen Andrews at, at Teztec, and we're looking for other collaborators, if you know anyone who's interested in trying to solve some of these internet native institutional problems, uh, and has a good name for a forum, that would be really helpful. 
um, basically the the goals of the project are basically you know trying to create a, a, a one place for uh, a place rather for persistent discussion. So uh, Riot, Slack, all these pro these these places they're awesome for con for you know real live conversations. They're not great for sort of longer lasting discussions that you want to be able to reference in the future. Uh, so you want to have a sort of a persist persistent forum. Uh, another one is you know help allowing people to easily understand the, the governance process. Uh, discuss it pretty with low friction, and then also signal their preferences with low friction. Uh, another one is, you know, sort of having a place to coordinate with useful tools, but not having just one like single place, right? And so this is not aiming to be the only place where people talk about, uh, you know, sort of protocol upgrades or something. It's just trying to be a place that has that removes the the barrier between the some different mechanisms that and then creates like this sort of conflicting results. Uh, you want something that sort of has options for each of these things that basically provides uh, a greater a greater signal and a better common knowledge around uh, protocol. You know, what basically what does the community want to do in terms of uh, coordination uh, around on-trade on uh, proposals? And then the next is you know something that's open, but it has a, it's secure. So you know it's not it's not susceptible, or at least it's minimally susceptible to sock puppets and fake accounts and you know social attacks. Uh, but it's still open to anyone, and, you know, and it's pseudonymous uh, if by choice. So if you want to be pseudonymous, you can. If you don't, you you know you can um, you know you can verify yourself, and we we have some interesting ways to do that, and in both the centralized and a decentralized way. Uh, and it would inherit you know moderators from Riot, Reddit, Obsidian, Slack, and Telegram announcements room, uh, and other places. You know we can we can figure out exactly um, you know open it to as many folks who are moderating the different all the different platforms uh, it currently. Uh, and then also localize it for underserved geographies, so especially uh, you know areas in Asia uh, where there's uh, you know currently uh, you know they're being underserved by the current uh, off-chain uh, explanations of proposals and that sort of thing. I know there was some incorrect information around Athens and whatnot. Uh, and then also uh, eventually this is a great place to launch uh, DAOs and decentralized funding institutions. So the idea is that you know it's very hard to launch something like that unless you have a platform that has. Uh, you know the ability to um, coordinate people around multiple different uh, governance tools. Uh, you know that basically you know sort of work in harmony to to uh, allow them to to uh, to fund things on chain. Uh, and then also, so you know, where are we with it right now? We're basically we're still mocking it up. Uh, and but the initial features that we have in mind are basically you know sort of a, a simple discourse forum similar to that Aragon AGP. Uh, then also, you know, sort of having dashboards about the current uh, proposal and amendment process. Then also a very easily digestible explanation of the process uh, and a link out to, or, or a summary of the proposals. And then also, as I said, a moderator community. And you know, even if we get you know twenty percent of the moderators, unique moderators from each of these platforms onto this new one, then it'll be uh, you know a pretty big you know we'll have a pretty big moderator community to start. Um, and then where does it go? Like, what's the point? Uh, long term, basically the idea is like you know what uh, what about integrating something like Keybase or even you know Stevens uh, you know part of the reason it's exciting to have Steven involved is you know sort of s playing with some really interesting ideas in terms of uh, you know identity so uh, on a decentralized uh, level so having something like Sona uh, you know basically a uh, you know uh, self sovereign identity uh, protocol for basically um, that that both of these will help us minimize sock puppetry uh, and also maintain openness. Uh, and basically, also having a way, uh, you know, to natively implement his uh, Stevens test vote uh, that you know an improved version of it that he, he we've been discussing that basically makes it really low friction, easy to signal your preferences, as well as localization uh, for uh, multiple geographies around the world. And then uh, later on, once we've you know sort of you know sort of allowed this this platform to mature a bit more, we 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 uh, are really interested in using it as like a, a sort of a, a launch pad for different DAO experiments uh, to fund public goods on Tezos. Uh, and uh, so, if you want to reach out and learn more about this, you know, obviously the Tezos Commons uh, handle on Twitter, uh, you know, their website they have a forum I'm sure as well. Uh, and then if you want to reach me, obviously uh, I have my name on uh, Twitter and Telegram, uh, and then also uh, Governance on Reddit and Riot. Uh, and uh, more, more details will come on this uh, in the coming months. So thank you.